That means the change in elevation from here to here needs to be a drop in one meter for one to a thousand. Now, a swale is dead level. It's on contour. So then we take the key line, right, and we, we can dig a little berm. Now, swales are non-compacted. I'm going to compact this one for the sake of our demo, but it's Scoop it up at the end like that. I'm going to compact it for our demo. So that it's probably maybe got a little bit of fall, but for the most part, it's level. Now, what can happen is, is we come over here to this next valley, we find that we have another opportunity for a dam, right? Which is right about here. So rather than dig it out, I'm just going to I'm just going to plunk. Soiling. And actually, before I do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna dig the swale out that connects the two. Any of you who are involved in childhood education, you can actually teach them something very practical. And they can enjoy it. I remember when I was going to grade school that any rainy days, we'd be out playing in the ditches, building dams. And then I changed schools and I went to a school where they actually kept all the kids in during the rain. Yeah. No, yeah. so they don't want to deal with the mess. Right. Why are you running a school then? <laughs> I mean, they don't want to deal with the mess. So I'm going to... Okay, so now what we have is a linked system, which may or may not be level, but we can sort that out as it goes. So, what happens with these is it's pretty close to level, but the swale, so it's not, the water always sees its own level, so you can just do that, right? Now it's somebody pass me another jug, please. <coughs> it's flowing a little bit, but not not in the same way the irrigation ditch was. Both of the dams are filling. stores it. Now, so it's, it's it catching. It, it's basically, so we're dealing with that catchment area, because any rain that was falling on those ridges wouldn't end up in those dams, right? So I just want to fill these up because I want to show you. Let's see, if we're building a dam, we got to make sure all of our levels are the same. These levels need to be identical. I'll show you why in a second, because if you look the volume of that, so I can fill this one up, and now it goes down that swale there, but it goes over and it fills that one, and we've got a few breaks in it, and we don't want that to happen. But water always sees its own level, so the whole system levels itself off. See, there's flow into that one from this one. I'm going to just 
dam up all these leaks here. If you're ever modeling this for somebody, like I've done it with sand, and sand you can't actually show the dynamics of it because it just bleeds away. Clay is the way to go, and I'm totally leaning towards now developing a class, like a clay pile classroom because it's so it does so much more than the whiteboard. You know, I brought that out here because I was going to use that. Lo and behold, we out of water. Yeah. So. What now when the system's full, we have to spill it somewhere. And we want to spill it as passively as possible. So what we have to do is make something called a level sill spillway. And the best place to spill water is out on a ridge. And all a level sill spillway is, is a gap in the mound of the swale. It's called a what kind of spillway? A level sill spillway. Level sill. Spillway. Yeah. Meaning that edge right there, which is the sill, yes. is perfectly level. And so what you do, we'll, and we'll, we'll measure out contour and things like that, and we'll we'll, t we'll talk so about it's this. Like in, like, it's like a fountain. It's not. It's it's flat a wide it's, fountain. it's a flat wide fountain. Yeah. Mountain. So basically, the whole system now will fill to that point, and then it'll start coming over there. Now this here, if we say we want on the dam, we want to have a certain amount of freeboard meaning the water level never comes to within a certain distance. Like say we want, we want to make sure that the water never comes to within uh, 40, 40 centimeters of the top of this. We make sure that this level here is exactly 40 centimeters lower than the crest of all of our dams. Right? So this one here is going to need to come up. Yeah, tools. I didn't ask you, Joe. I should have. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm just going to raise that up, compact this down a little bit so that it holds. Luna. <laughs> and this is why I like very precision because I'm a little worried that that is lower there as well. Excuse me. So this is the, the whole integrated system, and this is, Jeff Lawton loves swales. He absolutely, he loves swales and dams. He loves the way it links across the landscape. And when, this, when the water, so the dam fills first, the dam fills first because water won't stand on its head. So in the bottom of a swale during a big rain event, you'll get a little skim of water, like water over a tabletop. And it'll, it'll, it'll actually move a little bit, but only right here where it flows down into the pond, that edge. The pond will fill up and then it'll back flood to the end of the swale. And now you see we've swooped this up a little bit so that it holds it like a, like a drinking glass. It's a container for the water. And then the water in the swale will rise up like a tide. There's no flow. It's totally passive. Anytime you level water, you pacify it. You take the energy out of it, right? So somebody asked the question about Okay, well, won't diversion drains silt up your dam? Of course they will, because they're going to be moving soil across the landscape. It doesn't matter how slight the grade is, water will move materials around. So all you need to do is dig a low spot where the water slows down, a silt trap. And that, when the water comes in by the diversion drain, it'll hit that, and it'll just sit there, and it'll settle the material out. We're actually going to put a silt trap in this dam. We will put a silt trap in it because um, we don't want the dam to be murky. We want it to be nice and clear. We actually want it so that some people feel enticed to go for a swim in it because we want to get that fifth duty of water, the recreation, right? We could do a we could do a pond that's only a meter and a half deep. get it to be an appealing spot, we got to be prepared to go that extra distance. We can't just say, oh yeah, she'll be right. We got to understand what we're doing in the formula. 
Okay, so there we got our diversion drain working. See, it silts, catches the silt. Now I see this, the, the swale is only getting to a certain volume and the dam is filling first. So what did you do about the soap you just built up around? I built, I built a, a little low spot so that the water slows down there. A sedimentation pond. A silt trap. Okay, okay now look, it's, it's going to hit the other swale. And it's going to move along that swale. It goes by our spillway. Cool. Now that spillway is a little low. That's okay, just leave it. And see, you see where that flow is, that little riffle? It's, that riffle's moving back towards the first dam because sediment is moving. Right? See how it's moving sediment around? Mm -hmm. It's not really moving that, it's not flowing that fast, but it is moving sediment around. If we want to, we want to deal with it so that it doesn't go over top of the spillway like that, we can just make it a little bit easier for the water to move between Basically what was happening is that my flow out of here was greater than what that swale can handle, so it went over the spillway. So all we need to do, so now just for, we'll just slow it down. Now look, the other, the other dam fills. Level sill spillway there, and see, look, it's about. See, it's still, it's still, it's still flowing. It's still balancing itself off. This is all about pacifying water. Look, this is leveled now. You see how that's leveled? And there's less silt in it. See, that we, this water here is not flowing as rapidly as here, so there's less silt. So now, look, that dam's almost full. Now it's, now it's gonna back flood. It'll come up to that level there. Do you have to excavate that little uh, silt trap? Uh, as often as it fills. Uh, such a permaculture answer. <laughs> permaculture, a classic permaculture answer is it depends. <laughs> it's so site specific, and that's why it freaks engineers out. Uh oh, see now we've got a we've got a there we go. uh, didn't seal our dam. <laughs> That's, uh, that's very interesting. Yeah, just like that. Oh, man. But you see, that one, that one went and that one's still holding. So how, how are we doing for just do this? You know what? That's the value of a distributed system. Yeah, that is the value of a distributed system. Now, actually, just for the sake of the sake of argument, what we'll do is you get the point, right? That, that'll fill up. I just want to show you this spillway working. So now you see what's happening there is that, yeah. Okay, so it just comes off in a, you want it to come off in a thin skim, right? As passively as possible. Now the capacity of the spillway depends upon its length, right? If, you ha if you're worried about catchment area, you have to basically, this gap here has to be um, arranged in such a way as to handle the catchment of everything uphill. Right, uphill of it. Because that's what that's gonna be your flow in and this is your flow out. So if you're worried about it, you just make the spillway longer. 
Is there a ratio that you should? Oh, dude. <laughs> if you're if you're if you're be there with that's cleaning. complex complications that I don't know what and if you're scared just make it big. Okay. <laughs> that's I always just make them really big. So wide passive. Wide wide passive distribution, pacifying the water. Now watch what happens because this is spreading over. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna put more water in here and so we get water spreading across the whole thing, right? Now watch what happens when I do this. Right, it, you get in, you get an erosive. It speeds up because what we have is you have water that's like that. What you want is water that's like that. That's what we want to do with water. Right? We want to spread it across the landscape. We want the whole landscape to absorb and use it, especially when we're putting hardware in. When we're putting impermeable surfaces in, right? We decrease the permeability over our landscape. We collect the water in pipes, and then we discharge it at high energy, carrying a silt load into specific locations. We saturate those locations, and then they slip away. It's all about this. What happens is, is the function of the landscape gets disrupted. This happens in Vancouver and the North Shore all the time, right? There's always, every so often, there's like a whole block of houses will just fall off the side of the mountain, and it's because it's because. <laughs> They have disrupted the function of that landscape. And they supersaturate one zone when the water would have been, right? Any energy that is not put into productive use and you end up with pollution, where the system goes into chaos. So all the energy of the water put on one spot and you have problems.